Hello guys, Rod here from Radku Tarot and this is going to be Virgo Sun, Virgo Moon and uh, Virgo Rising weekly tarot reading for March 4th to March 10th, uh, 2019. So uh, while I'm shuffling the cards, uh, which by the way are going to be the traditional reader weight uh, tarot deck, uh, I want to remind you once again that uh, this is going to be a, a general reading for Virgo star sign and for that reason um, it's going to it's going to resonate in a different way and in a different level with uh, every single different uh, Virgo. So, <clears throat> if you want more personal touch or you know your personal situation to be analyzed by me through tarot cards and to give you any prediction for the uh, for the future regarding that personal situation of yours then that is a subject of a personal reading and for such you can check out uh, my website which is listed down below in the description of this video and uh, there you're going to find a, a full list of my services as well as uh, their pricings. So that set aside, cutting down the cards and let's see what we got. So the first card for you Virgo which is the topic of your week is going to be the seven of wands. Followed by the second card, which is the negative approach you can take toward the situation of Seven of Wands, that is going to be the World card. Third one, that is to be the positive approach. And uh, we have the Queen of Swords here, the positive approach toward the situation. And the last card, which is the final outcome of growth, should you follow the guidance of Tarot, this is going to be the Four of Wands. So once again, Seven of Wands is a topic, the world, it is the negative approach toward the situation. Then uh, we do have the Queen of Swords, which is the positive approach toward the situation. And the last one that we do have, this is going to be the Four of Wands, which is the final outcome of growth, should you follow the guidance of Tarot. <laughs> All right, so placing down the cards on my table and it does look like that this is going to be uh, a, a week, a, a turning point week for you. Uh, it is because, well, it kind of, it kind of falls a bit awkward here, uh, the seven of wands in the world card. Mm, I don't know how really to explain it to make um, a big sense of it, but um, let's say that uh, you are to face some sort of a, uh, a a temptation or a test, right? Which is gonna be a bit overwhelming, at least at the start, but should you not give up on it, uh, it the results are gonna be very, very good. This is the best way overall I can explain uh, the reading, but let's dive deeper card by card. And also I'm going to, I'm going to draw additional card per position which will gonna make the, the spread enhanced. So going with the first one, which is the Seven of Wands topic. It means that, yes, you are gonna be somewhat tested or tempted, either inwardly or uh, by the external situation. So something enthralling or challenging is going to appear that you are gonna feel yourself compelled to um, to basically take participation into. <clears throat> Usually it's about a challenging thing, but it is not excluded that it could be as well, um, you know, positive, if not challenging, you know, positive. Challenging in the sense, you know, um, a colleague of yours is challenging you, a project is challenging you and so on and so forth. But the thing with the Seven of Wands is that you have to have a, um, that readiness to jump into action and as well uh, acute alertness it will be required uh, from you throughout the week so you can scope the right moment when you can incorporate your actions and when you can actually annihilate competition because re really this is what we're talking about here guys a competition now with the seven of wands um you can face quite often an opposition and resilience that is from your co-workers uh, from your friends and family or from your husband or a wife. It doesn't really matter. But uh, the, the thing is that you have to straight away address the issue here. Giving it a silent treatment or hoping that it's going to resolve itself on its own accord. It's not going to really uh, uh, cut it through because 
usually the the challenges manifesting themselves through the seven of wands escalates very very quickly and before you know it is going to be such a big of a deal that it will be almost impossible from your behalf to deal with it that's why let's say you hear some nasty rumors at work for you you got to address them um, straight away uh, your supervisor comes where you're working on and uh, you know among many people and they <clears throat> are asking who wants to take that project you know who wants to deal with that thing well that has to be you I mean you have to be very swift with your actions and timing should be as well kind of the correct one the additional card here that is going to be the page of swords so what we do uh, have these are <clears throat> active friends so once again we're talking about an extreme amount of action at your behalf but with the page of swords it will require from you as well to search for unorthodox sources of help meaning things that beforehand you thought that they have no relevance to your life now those means could be uh, something which is going to help you big time to tackle with this new challenge with this new tempting thing that could be as i said either inwardly or for created from the exterior situation as well with the page of uh, swords Virgos, you need to rely on your keen and agile mind. So uh, th this really speaks that your actions and the plan in general should be very un unorthodox. So kind of close to the mind, even if the page didn't came up here, is because you will have an opposition, you will have a, a competition throughout the week regarding this tempting thing, you know, or a test. Anyway, so... You gotta be always one step uh, one step ahead and how you do so when you are being unpredictable how you can be unpredictable when you your ideas in general and um, your plan is created by your original thinking not by the orthodoxal thinking but by the original unorthodoxal thinking of yours also uh, a bit of a superficial meaning here of these cards that maybe your social circle requires cleaning there are people in there in your social circle which are presenting themselves as so-called friends but they are no friends at all they are just you know making you feel poignant and despondent therefore uh, at least at the start of the week i'm sorry that these uh, videos are coming a little bit late but have been quite busy uh, recently and probably some of you who are following my lives know that i am planning to go back into the university so i'm trying to prepare myself for the uh, preliminary exam so that kind of like adds a little bit of a stress on top of it <clears throat> So try moving on from now forward to be pretty much on top of my game and uh, kind of come up, come up with the weekly readings on schedule. So I do apologize for the delay here. But <clears throat> my point here was is that uh, it will benefit you a bit if you take a couple of days at the start of the week to really answer to yourself who is a good friend of mine, who is uh, there just or who is you know there in my social circle that it is creating tension pressure and it's making me feels warmongry and uh, as soon as you answer to that question you will know where the cleaning should start so going to the next card which is the uh, negative approach toward the situation that will be the world and the world in this case points only to one thing bailing out so as soon as this challenging thing comes around the last thing you want to do if you want to be successful that is is to bail out so your boss or your supervisor comes around who do you want to take that thing who do you want to tackle with this issue you know and you kind of keep it silent you don't want to do so and uh, basically you because that's the thing with the world coming here that will be an additional an additional enterprise you will still have to deal with your original things your original responsibilities just because you take a, an important project that your supervisor asked you to doesn't mean that this is going to liberate you from the current responsibilities you hold toward the job same thing goes into your relationship just because you know you agreed to help your partner with something it doesn't relieve you from certain responsibility you do have toward your marriage 
or towards your relationship. Meaning that this is kind of like an extra burden, which it will require a lot of efforts from your behalf. And as I said, readiness to action, readiness to jump into action, I'm sorry, and uh, acute alertness and so on and so forth. But with the world card, here, if you want to be more successful at the end of the week than the start of the week, you have to take this additional burden enterprise or endeavor, you name it the way you want. <clears throat> However, with the world card uh, sitting into this uh, position, it is kind of like taking on the burden instead of liberating them, uh, yourself from the burden. Additionally, the world card in this position is telling you that whatever you are toiling at, it does make sense, okay? So things have not been yet finished, uh, which instantly gives me, uh, or kind of like uh, shoots into my mind that example here, um, your marriage is on the rock, things aren't going on very well at all, and suddenly throughout the week here, you do have this new enterprise coming around that will require your readiness to jump into action and so on and so forth which having the world in this um in this position points that you can do that you can traverse the things around basically the world says that it is not over yet okay so maybe for some of you virgos this week is going to be the very last chance to traverse a poignant into productive situation poverty to lucrivity and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> what I'm trying to say here, guys, is that it will require a one final push. And that push needs to be once again created through an orthodox way of thinking. The accompanied card of the world, that is going to be the Ace of Wands. So what we have here, these are passive neutrals. And uh, it's basically, it does, it does tell you not to, to seek a new beginning, but in the framework of the already existing endeavors. So this is not about the, the brand new perspective, like swapping one, one job over another or swapping one partner over another. This is about trying to resolve the issue from a different angle. <clears throat> Because the appearance of that card here with the world, it does says that you are not using the full capacity of the means that you possess. There are still um, options available for you which can make a difference into the situation that you are finding yourself struggling at. Therefore, once again, take a couple of days, think of what you can do, something that you are not capitalizing on, and as soon as you find it, then... Um, kind of like incorporate your actions into that direction. That should involve brand new an enterprise, an enterprise that you haven't thought about until this very moment. And it, if we're talking about career, it will involve some sort of a, a slumber skills you had no idea you possess. So to me, especially career-wise, uh, this endeavor, this challenging thing that comes around uh, it's going to as well, how can I play, spur out your capabilities. But it's also going to involve a certain sense of insecurity because as you don't know that you can do it, uh, you need to be courageous enough to take on the agenda here or to take on the enterprise just so you can find out that you are good at it. And uh, it could be something you can make money from uh, going forward into, uh, into the future. So the next card, the positive approach towards the situation, uh, that is going to be the Queen of Swords. So Queen of Swords asks you to be very assertive and emancipating as well, uh, in a sense of that only through assertion and emancipation, it is how you can push the things through. For those who don't know what emancipating mean, it means to be in track with the current credo or the current creed. Kind of like, I don't know how to say it, but on the top of your game, let's say that way, okay? But um, also the Queen of Swords here um, points that should you take your time, you can very well discern based on your experience from the past what you can do 
and what you cannot do, how you can push it through and how you cannot push it through. So it's all about being objective about your capabilities and being objective about what's, um, what kind of, um, what kind of means of your personal arsenals of skills you're not using either toward your marriage or either toward your career. Now, marriage-wise, relationship-wise, the Queen of Swords in this particular case, it does give a glimpse of understanding that things are gonna get much better if you establish a certain rules in between you and the partner that you are with. Uh, but the Queen of Swords is all about chemistry, all right? So if, you, if there is no chemistry anymore, then unfortunately, at least with this card, things cannot go any further. But should there is a chemistry, then that means that if your marriage is on the rock or your relationship is on the rock, definitely can't be saved. It just is gonna take, once again, a bit of an orthodox approach toward the situation. But should you be on the top of your game, being assertive, really uh, relying on your previous experience, capable to discern what is what can be done and what cannot be done and so on and so forth, uh, your waverings are gonna calm down uh, quite a lot. It's not to mention that should you experience some physical issues, I don't like to speak about health, but uh, as a key word, the Queen of Swords points to improvement into one's health. How big improvements? That is gonna be different for every single one of you, but just the Queen of Swords in some cases points to improvement into one's, um, into one's health. But regardless what your situation is, Virgos, <clears throat> establishing certain patterns and rules in sense of being organized and not being scattered, so to scamper around among many opportunities or around many possibilities, excuse me, is going to give you the best possible outcome that you can achieve throughout uh, this week. And uh, that is further confirmed here, guys, by the Two of Swords, which is the catalyst of the Queen of Swords. So what we do have is active supporters here, and it means that you need to seek an information. Basically, you are in that tough spot because you lack an information. And uh, as, as soon as you obtain this... Um, this information you require, then the scales are gonna linger towards your end. So you're gonna get the upper hand. Because the appearance of the Two of Swords here points that uh, there is everything is holding on a very precious equilibrium right now because this information haven't came around. But before you decide what to do with this tempting, um, tempting challenge uh, that comes to you, you need to consider all points of view meaning of which uh, that at the start of the week you will not have the best um, or rather like the most productive points of view so you have to spend a little bit of time to kind of think and analyze well the situation through your original thinking and an orthodox idea so you can obtain every single possible point of view upon your marriage upon your project that it is given to you the um relationships with your friends and so on and so forth so you can choose the best possible approach out there once again should you rely on your experience should you be assertive enough and emancipating enough i don't see a reason why you should not be able to push the things through and to become victorious at the end of the week which actually it is what happens here with the four of wands which is the final outcome of growth throughout the week so you are going to finalize a very important cycle of growth this challenging enterprise that comes at the start of the week is finally overcome or it is finally sorted out and as you sort it out that marks as i said the uh, ending of a very important cycle of growth and the start of a new one which is gonna be on a higher level of the previous one. For example, this challenging thing was into your relationship, you were able to overcome it, you finalize a very important cycle of growth relationship-wise, and now your partner is start thinking of proposing your marriage because this is the next cycle of growth. Same goes into your career. My point is here that should you tackle and resolve with this challenging enterprise that comes to you in this, uh, in this week, 
you are going to grow one step higher. It could involve promotion. It could involve uh, the stir of an uh, important project for yourself as well. It could involve, you know, a new social circle that you are aimed to involve yourself in, etc. Or it could involve reallocation. It does depend what you want. It does depend what you are fighting for, right? So this challenge, it's a test here. Like I said, you're going to be tested inwardly or by the exterior situation. Can you deal with the next cycle of development? And by you tackling with this um, challenging enterprise, proving yourself in front of the universe, if you want to say it that way, because this has a lot to do with the universe, uh, that, uh, that card, the four of wands, <clears throat> then uh, pretty much the next cycle of growth is granted to you. But what you need to know with the four of wands is that everything happens through a hard amount of work. So you have to toil for it. You can't expect that things are going to happen and resolve on their own accord. Something that I have mentioned at the start of the reading with the seven of soul or with the seven of wands where reissues are escalating very, very quickly and needs to be addressed straight away. But nonetheless, at the end of the week, guys, should you um, follow here the guidance of Tarot, you will definitely gonna have a prerequisite to celebrate, a big celebration. And then uh, the accompanied card that is going to be the um, justice and the justice points to that, to that place is that, um, well, I will bit, um, repeat myself because this is just a confirmation we do have uh, active support uh, not supportive but active friends here in this position and uh, the justice says couple of things is this says first that you completely deserve your growth and your future steps of development second of all it does point that your your discernment was correct as i said with the queen of swords that you need to kind of like uh, rely on your um, on your discernment of the previous experience you had. So your discernment gives and bears fruit. And as well, the justice is about settling accurately uh, tasks and step steps forward, almost like creating plan for yourself, how to proceed with the future with minimum efforts to achieve greatest things. One thing, however, to be acknowledged here with the last cards is that whatever you sown at that point at the end of the week is going to be reaped, either good or bad. So it's very important when the justice is here, especially with the four of wands, to be accountable first and foremost toward oneself. So <clears throat> there is no doubt looking at these cards that you are get what you deserve. What you deserve will be determined based on the efforts you place in this week, March 4th to March 10th, 2019. That's why slacking is not an option available, giving up is not an option available, bailing out is not an option available, but what the option available, if you want truly to be successful, either career or relationship, at least in the near future, according to these cards, is to really put the toes behind it, be ready to jump into action, have that alertness how to tackle with things and be an original thinker. So uh, basically show your expression or give your fair share of expression for this world or in this world. So that being said, Virgos, this was your weekly tarot reading for March 4th to March 10th, 2019. I hope you enjoyed it and you liked it, guys. And uh, once again, this was your general reading for Virgo star sign. And for that reason, it's going to resonate in a different way and in a different level for every single different Virgo. Virgos, I, uh, I tried to give you examples here to make it a little bit more personal, but tarot really shines when there is a narrative. So it really shines when answering questions. So if you want that to be your case, I to answer myself, to answer question, to answer your questions, that is a subject of a personal reading. And for such, you can check out my website, which is listed down below in the description of this video. And there you're going to find a full list of my services as well as their pricings. Rod signing out now. See you next time. Bye.